Young Chuck keeps hearing about all these new AI technologies, embeddings, vector databases, RAG, but he is lost. He has no idea what they are. He hears that these technologies can 10x the performance of AI apps, and he feels like he's falling behind. Thankfully, though, he clicked on this video. Young Codebenders, before I explain this tech to you and explain how embeddings and vector databases work, I just want to show you the potential of this technology. This is an indie hacker project that was built by one solo developer. It's basically just a PDF chat app and it's making over $60,000 per month. An indie hacker solo developer project. It's just a project where you upload your resume and you can chat with it, basically. This is just one example of a cool project and there are a lot more things that you can build as a solo developer utilizing this technology. But it's not just the technology that solo developer use for indie hacker projects. It's things that giant tech companies use as well. Google uses this to provide search suggestion results. Netflix uses it to provide movie recommendations. LinkedIn uses it to connect similar people together. Spotify uses it and a lot of other tech companies use it as well. Young Contenders, in this video, we're going to learn about the power of embeddings, vector databases, and RAG, which stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. My name is Zorbek. I'm a senior software engineer from New York City. And on this channel, I teach you how to use AI to stand out as a developer. So first, why do we need embeddings? What is this thing? Embeddings basically turn a large amount of data into a format that makes it very easy for the AI to process. And I'm going to give you a very concrete example of how I use embeddings. So this is just like a few examples here. But the concrete example of the way I use it is this app that I've created. It's a children book AI generator. So in this app, a parent can just specify a description of their child and age, and then the AI will generate a book with like text and images. The reason why I'm using embeddings and vector databases is because I want to improve the quality of the results. So what I want to do is if a parent, for example, has a child and they want to create an adventure book for a boy who is like five years old, I want to be able to provide the AI with high quality children books about adventure for children who are roughly in that age range, because then the AI can just generate much better quality results. than if I just make this random query out of the blue, and that's basically the goal here. Embeddings help me provide a much better context for the AI by using ChatGPT, you know that just the quality of the context you provide has a very high correlation to the quality of the output. So that's the reason why I use embeddings. But concretely, what are embeddings? Like, what does it mean concretely? Embeddings are basically math vectors of data that represent words or sentences or paragraphs. Basically, what it is. So you have a sentence like "Yo, what's up?" An embedding of this would be a vector that is just a representation of this in numbers in a space with many dimensions. And just to help you like represent this in your head to kind of visualize it in two dimensions, it would look like this. If we had like two dimensions vectors, it wouldn't be as interesting because two dimensions is very basic to represent data. You don't have enough information. It's kind of like a very gross oversimplification. But let's say we have this just for the sake of um, trying to picture it in our head. You have this two dimensional representation where you have two dimension. One dimension is vertically here. It's like the, the goodness of a character and our data is like the characters here. And the other dimension horizontally is the strength of the characters. So you see that Goku is good and strong. So he's in this quadrant. And depending on the level of strength and goodness is going to go further on the right side and then further up than another character. And you see that characters that are close to each other will have embeddings that are close to each other. That's kind of the way it works. So if you have words that are close to each other in the space, they're going to be present close to each other. And there's a bunch of things that we can do based on that. Now, like I said before, embeddings actually have a lot of dimensions. They have dimensions in the hundreds or in the thousands. So it's a lot more than just 2D. And even this picture right here is like a 3D representation. So we cannot picture in the head above 3D, but that's just to show you that those dimensions are a lot, a lot bigger than this. Now, how do you get embeddings? Like, how do you create embeddings in the first place? Well, you're not going to create them manually. You're going to use the OpenAI Embeddings API. So OpenAI have, has an API to create those embeddings, and you can just take the text that you have, you're going to send it to your API, and then it's going to generate this vector. The code for this is super simple. It's literally just a few lines long. You're going to use their Embeddings API that is provided by the OpenAI package that they have. In this variable, you're going to have that embedding. And what I do, for example, for my children book app is I have a database of high quality books, I send them all into the embeddings API and then generate a bunch of embeddings. The problem though is what do I do with this data? I have an array of vectors or like a database of embeddings. What do I do now? I need to store it somewhere to be able to reuse it, right? And that's where vector databases come into the picture. The problem with 
regular like databases like MySQL or PostgreSQL is that they are not good to handle that type of data. That's why people who are smart have invented very efficient databases that handle specifically embeddings. And there are companies like Pinecone or Chroma that you might have heard of. They're specialized in this. They specialize in storing embeddings and retrieving them in an efficient and quick way. What do you do now? Right? Like you have a database of vectors, of embeddings. What do you do with this? Well, the simple thing that you could do is you could literally use it as a regular database where you use it to just retrieve data. But that wouldn't be as efficient, right? It wouldn't be as interesting to just have a database where you upload data and then you just retrieve it. What we'd like to do is actually use this data and empower it by combining it with generative AI to create new things, to make it more creative. And that's the whole philosophy behind retrieval augmented generation, also known as RAG. Basically, a user is going to make a request to your app. Your app right here is going to search and look up your embeddings API, your, your vector database to find the most relevant documents based on what the user has asked. Then it's going to provide both that question and those relevant documents to an LLM, to ChatGPT, for example. And based on this, it's going to generate a much higher quality response. So me, for example, for my children book, a user comes makes a request for a children book for their child that they want. The app is going to make a request to the embeddings API to find the closest documents, the closest books to this request. So like if parent wants like a comedy book about their child who is 10 years old, then the app is going to look up for books that are like children books in the comedy category for children who are between like 10 and 12 years old, for example. It's going to retrieve those documents, it's going to retrieve the top five that are the closest to this request. It's going to send that request from the user combined of those five books to the LLM and then it's going to generate a much higher quality book based on this. That's the whole concept. That's what retrieval augmented generation is. And now once you understand this, you can start building apps that are a lot more powerful, that provide a lot better results like this children book app that I've created. If you're interested in this, if you want to learn how to build apps like the one you have right here, the spots for my Codebender bootcamp, the pre-order is going to close soon. So if you're interested, go to lastcombender.com slash bootcamp and I'll see you there. And now, if you want to know a very interesting open source AI that I've discovered to build very cool projects, you can check out this video right here.